All right, lesson time. So in the late 1950s, an American economist by the name Walt Rostow published an article called The Stages of Economic Growth. There. This article started what's widely known today as the modernization theory, which theorizes the path that quote unquote undeveloped countries take to become developed countries. Um, those terms are highly contested today, but we're just going to use that for now. It was highly influential at the time, but it is widely criticized by many modern day experts in the field. Because keep in mind that this theory was developed in the 1950s, a time when countries weren't what they're like today, you know? There hadn't been any country that you could consider fully developed. But we'll get back to the criticism of this theory later on in this video. So let's try to visualize this. Here, let's draw up a graph, okay? So Rosso's theory consisted of five stages that go in this order. The traditional society stage, the preconditions to take off, the actual takeoff stage, the drive to maturity stage, and finally the age of mass consumption. Now the traditional society stage describes a society that's low key and old fashioned in the sense that life was very farm or agriculturally reliant on. Kind of like this, you know? You know, those um, agrarian societies. The productivity levels in the economy at this stage are pretty low. All in all, it's a stage where the economy and society is at its very beginning stages. So they're not that advanced. It's all very, you know, traditional if you want to remember it that way. But in due time, this society would eventually transition to what's called the preconditions to takeoff stage, where the economy of said society goes through necessary changes to try get the economy chugging. This means like, you know, proper infrastructure being built, the agricultural sector is beginning to be more productive, the mobility of goods start to increase, allowing for more trade to happen around, and also importantly, financial institutions are established such as banks and all that, you know. Which is where we begin to see proper currencies being introduced and money flowing around the economy. So next comes the takeoff stage. This is where the economy begins to specialize and you start to see certain sectors of the economy begin to receive a big boost in productivity and experience a lot of economic growth. Think of how Japan specialized in exporting cars many decades ago. This is also when cash in the form of investment start to come in. After that comes the drive to maturity stage. This is when the technologies that help the sectors of the economy to take off begin to mature. And the economy by this point would have developed way past the stage when they're still considered a traditional society. This is also when new sectors of the economy begin to grow as well. And you start to see a lot of white collar office workers in the economy. So just think of your typical office building economy where lots of people are working in offices rather than factories. Working in offices rather than the farm, you know. Think about it that way. Now finally, we have reached the age of mass consumption stage. <laughs> Quite a grand name if you ask me. Here, the working class has pretty good access to consumer goods and services and can enjoy other things such as a sense of security, welfare, and leisure. Now this is all just a gist of Rostow's theory if you weren't willing to read through his entire article. Feel free to take a screenshot of this by the way, in case you want to use it to study. However, it's important to note that 60 years later, today, it's very evident that this is not the best way to look at development. The biggest issue is that this theory is very linear. Like it would be very hard to generalize this theory towards a wide range of countries or even cities. Each stage of this model lists specific criteria that's expected for an economy to achieve before they can move to the next stage. But in reality, these criteria don't always happen in the order that is theorized. But on top of that, a major question that still remains is what happens after the last stage? Like we can see countries and cities today that have seemingly reached this age of mass consumption stage. But governments are still continually tackling the issue of continuing to sustain economic growth after reaching this stage. So what's next? Are we gonna end up like Wally? But yeah, I'm no expert at any of this and I learned all this for a uni course that I did and I thought I'd just put it into my own words. So yeah, I hope this all made sense.